you welcome to another edition of the program Tech Innovate, a program that talks about technology, its functionalities, and how it affects you. Yeah, we talked about some things about um, small businesses like last week, and this week the program is packaged for yes, from our Gadget of the Week segment on to our interview segment and then to our DIY. Our Gadget of the Week, especially is what um it's something that gives me joy yeah it gives me joy <laughs> so before i talk too much let's quickly go take a look at our gadget of the week my name is Ginika, and our gadget of the week is the solar power tricycle yes <laughs> let's go take a look Imagine a smart government agency enabled by smart people, smart processes, smart technologies, and committed to building smart public agencies across the nation. Welcome to Galaxy Backbone, one government, one network. This tricycle, also known as Kekena Pep, is very different from the regular ones you have seen in Nigeria because it is solar powered. An Aquaibon based Indigen, a Komobon Fiber, alongside others, constructed and defended this solar powered tricycle as his first degree project in Electrical Engineering, Federal University of Technology, Futo Owere. It was gathered that the tricycle has no engine and uses just battery and solar system to work. It can go 11 kilometers without hitches. At the not so recently concluded trade fair in Uyo Akwaibom state, the solar tricycle was introduced. This tricycle will also be helpful to the ozone layer because it is clean and non-polluting with zero emissions. Imagine a smart government agency enabled by smart people, smart processes, smart technologies, and committed to building smart public agencies across the nation. Welcome to Galaxy Backbone, one government, one network. Welcome back. Yeah, Nigerians are very creative and very innovative, I must confess. Now let's go into our interview segment where we talk something that has to do with you as a parent and as a child on the internet. Imagine a smart government agency enabled by smart people, smart processes, smart technologies, and committed to building smart public agencies across the nation. Welcome to Galaxy Backbone, one government, one network. Now with the different activities going on on the internet world and youth, especially children, getting involved in every day, like getting involved in it every day, it is needful to be an e-disciplinarian, yeah, an e-mom, an e-dad, an e-parent, or would I say an e-Nigerian parent. <laughs> okay, so with me in the studio to do a bit of sensitization on e-parenting is a program manager, a trainer on digital safety, and e-parenting lara Raji, thank you for coming on the show you're welcome okay so this is the first time on tech innovate i'm having a female on my show no. so give me five <laughs> okay so lara let's go straight to the point what is e-parenting so um basically e-parenting is just like keeping um tab on the activities of your kids online um knowing what they do from their homework because these days you get to see people when they give them homework 
the first thing they want to do is go online to check you Google. know research and all of that aside from that you have people having relationship online okay right so it's it's important for parents to be able to keep tab on what their kids are doing online it's not just about parenting offline literally our life have moved offline and um, online it's mm -hmm. no longer offline anymore yeah. so if you're going to um train your child offline you have to also train them online, online. you don't have to limit yourself offline because an average teenager spend most more than eight hours on on the internet mm -hmm. while they are playing with their phone or they're chatting with somebody on whatsapp and if I can ask you, the first thing that comes when you wake up in the morning, what do you do first? Be sincere. Okay, I just check my phone for yeah. messages. <laughs> okay, so if you don't check your messages, maybe your alarm or something. But the yeah. first thing you get to do is like you pick your phone. Even before you say you want to go and we. Even if you want to go and we. Even before some people do that, even before you say your prayers. Yes, because the first thing you just want to do, you just want to pick it's your phone. You just by your bedside. Yes, I'm just like, like okay. And maybe when you're just checking the time, then you now see Twitter, then you now be like, okay, okay let me just scroll yeah. through what's happening. Yeah, and that's, that's it. True. And your day starts. So most people, their day starts with social media. Okay. So how does e-parenting work? Because to some people watching right now, it's mm -hmm. new, you know, and they're like, she, I go to enter my picking phone. They check, you know, I'm trying to bring myself now to the layman. Mm -hmm. I go to enter my picking phone. Will I be carrying the phone up and down, telling him, okay, don't do this, don't go here, don't do this, you know, how does it work? So one thing about e-parenting, it has to do with educating them first. Okay. You have to be able to educate your child, have open communications with them. Mm. And if it needs to be monitored, then yes, you can monitor them with an app. There's several apps to do that. Whoa. But, um, okay. Before we go into that, I feel the first thing you have to do is have open communications with them. Okay. Tell them, okay, these things, what, what, are, what, are, what are the things that are available on, the social, on social media platform? It's not all about you having friends. It's not the number of quantity of friends you have online. It's the quality of friends you have online. Oh, nice. Watch you get it. Yeah. So it's not about the number. If you have 500 friends, mm. if you have... Um, even if you have 200 friends and they're really, really adding value to your life, it's really worth it. It's not about your validation. It's not in the, co it's not, it's not in the likes and in the comments when you post pictures. We have to be able to build self-esteem of our kids. Outside social outside media. Social media. Yeah. Because most people, especially teenagers, you know, when, you, when they see their friend's picture and they see maybe 800 and something like oh, they were like... It just oh, makes wow. you like, my God, yeah. <laughs> and it brings down their like, esteem, like, okay, so... Probably I have to take thousand and take pic ten pictures to to be able to get the the, the good one. So people go as far as snapping like taking nude pictures. Yeah, that's that's another thing about content. What are the contents that you need to you need to post online? These are discussions you have to have with your child. These are ch discussions you have to have with children. Most times, parents don't really think that is necessary. But you see someone who is naive, right? Mm -hmm. And probably while they are chatting with a friend, supposedly they don't even know them. Because you have pedophiles online. Yeah. There are people that, there are people that you don't even... Especially in Nigeria, whereby we get to sell our phone off. There are times that you don't wipe off your contacts. Yeah. Maybe you have a phone. And somebody else gets the phone. It's, I've, I've experienced that. And the person said, oh, I have that contact. I saw it on the phone that I bought. And I'm like, even if you saw my number, you have no right because we don't have any relationship. You shouldn't call You shouldn't me. have sent yeah. me a message. So assuming it's just a child, what would happen? Yeah. They'll go on with that conversation. The vulnerable. The vulnerable. Yeah. And it's they have this trait of um trust. They get to trust people easily. easily. Yeah. Which can be like a bad one for them. So yeah. for, for parents, I think you have to have discussions. Parents need to have discussions about time limits. Yeah. You know, how many time more minutes do you want to spend online? How many hours do you want to spend online? Some people spend oh, close to eight hours. Yeah. More than and if you're going to spend a number of hours and time, who are the thing? Who who do you have discussions with? What's the limit? Do when people are telling you, so it's, yeah, parents has to be parents have to like have this discussion about when somebody tells you send me a nude picture of yourself, don't do it. Mm. When a child, when um, someone you don't know tells you, oh, can we hook up somewhere? No, it's wrong. You can't hook up with that person because you don't know that person. Mm. Before you do that, you should have that conversation with your parent or someone you trust, your elder ones or your aunties or your uncles, and say, okay, this person is saying this. You don't just go out there mm -hmm. and just meet someone because you've had conversations with them over time. I mean, there's something about online because it gives you 
the, the time to express yourself, build relationship over time. Mm. So when they trust you, they feel like, okay, this person, I don't think this person will harm, him, harm me or do anything. Mm. And most times, it's the lady that is always on the, the, on the, the receiving, lady, on the receiving end. end. Yeah. So parents have to have that discussion. Or what are the things I should do online? What are the things I should know? Especially teenagers. I know it's going to be very difficult for them having conversation with teenagers because, you know, at that level, they want to just, they're playing yeah. pranks and all of that. But then I think having open communication with them is, is a good way to start. You know, you know, let me, let me cut you short there. You know, when um, a child is growing, you know, you know, and becoming an adult, you know, the adolescent age, age. it gets to a point the child is like, mom dad everybody's just getting on my nerves why do you want to know what i'm doing is there an approach a parent can take that okay you don't probably hurt this child like you know sometimes when you um overdo some things like not like overdoing per se but it could be really offensive for the child i'm trying to put myself in their shoes mm -hmm. like okay i take my tab or i take my phone and mom is like give me your phone let me see what you're doing right you get so how do as a parent how do i do that that i don't hurt my child's feeling while trying to ensure that i am monitoring what's going on okay so there, there, there are quite some up like you have mind guard okay that when you install on your on your child's phone and your phone you do the setting you can it's like you're cloning the person's phone oh so nice. you literally clone his phone or her phone without him without knowing him knowing oh nice and you know um, when you use the Wi-Fi, mm -hmm. there, I know that you can limit um, the website where the child gets to go to. Oh yeah, I have to. I have yeah. That, yeah. So those are things that you can settings that you can do on you know, over some the Wi-Fi. Some too. privacy settings you can do, and sometimes it's not even only about social media. For kids, when you're watching YouTube, yeah, there's there's a YouTube for kids. Okay. So for kids, sometimes I, I advise parents that when they want to when their kids want to watch youtube they should download the youtube for kids because it filters um some certain context that you, you wouldn't want your children, children to see at that age, age. Yeah. yeah because there are pop-up ads that keep coming onto your when you're watching youtube channels yeah you don't know what your ch children can actually and their, their, their memory is very fast anything they see sticks to, their, to brain, their brain yeah. and they want to play it out and see yeah. how it goes right so um YouTube for kids, even Google search. There's there, there are search engines for kids that kids could could use instead of using the Google search okay. engine. Parents could actually use things like Kid Red. There's some iPads for kids too. All right. Yeah, so so it's when they want to use Google search instead of them using the normal Google search. Maybe when they're trying to um, type in Justin Bieber and they don't want things like when he peed in the you know and all of that so if you use google for kids like kid rex like kiddo yeah. it helps them filter some context okay right and all of that so all right, very so, so we'll just go on a short break right now mm -hmm. we'll be talking e-parenting taking a we'll be right back with the other half of the interview don't go anywhere <laughs> Imagine a smart government agency enabled by smart people, smart processes, smart technologies, and committed to building smart public agencies across the nation. Welcome to Galaxy Backbone, one government, one network. Welcome back. So we've been talking e-parenting and the interview has just gone halfway. Yes, if you're just joining us, you've missed a lot but you can catch up on the moving train i still have a meal Raji, talking e-parenting and um she's mentioned so many things like um apps you could use to clone your children's phone monitor them you know how you could monitor your kids online um privacy settings and all you could do to monitor your kids so my next question is um 
what are the dangers of um you know i don't care parents okay um so you have to their kids escape. okay yes. so, yeah so um you have cyber stalking you have online grooming you have sexting so sexting is when it comes to this when it comes to that part where kids are being asked about sending nude pictures and all mm, of that over okay. whatsapp and all of that it's called sexting there's online grooming um which i feel that uh, we're not really taking seriously here in, okay. in, in in nigeria anyways but it's something that over time has been happening mm -hmm. and pedophiles most times get to use that they, they get to groom a child over a time to like them so they have conversations with the person and say oh do you know what i'm i'm a i'm 15 but obviously they're 45 because it's it's just when you're having conversation with people online it's not what they tell you you don't really have to believe what they tell you because you, you don't know them right and most times when you're having that conversation you build so much um affection affection of you know and maybe probably the person says oh i'm 15 or i'm 16 you're like oh he's my age mate yeah. or she's my age mate it could be a guy it could be a lady yeah. and you guys start talking and talking and maybe probably you guys have been chatting for three months and one day he sends you and you're like oh today you're not online what happened like i don't have air time he sends you a recharge card nice one. <laughs> right yeah he's buying you a gift online. um out of data i could subscribe for you it's not a bad one right mm. and when he says Let, let's meet you feel like this person has bought this this person has bought that for me it should be you, low yeah, time. you know and you're comfortable with that person he has actually groomed you over his period of time mm. because he has been grooming you to like him to be able to trust him mm. and when you have conversation and you people go out probably say come on let's 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 have a hangout or something mm. and you go out and in terms of maybe a kidnap or something and he rapes you there's several stories online yeah that I've you know there was even a particular video i watched it was in american anyways it was in america sorry anyways and the guy has been grooming a 13 year old wow. but he had to do with the consent of the parents and wow. because the parents were like my child cannot do this and he was like your child can't do it and the guy said that okay today um i want i want us to see we're going to see at a particular time and, and the kid was like okay fine my, my, my parents will be out of the house by 7 p.m mm -hmm. so you can come by and funny enough um the parents were with the guy okay so it, we actually, it was a prank sort of a prank but no we standing we're just trying to test the child and to be sincere the child went for the date and by the time um the child was entering the car the parents shouted and said what if this guy taking you somewhere what if he had killed you you didn't tell us anything you didn't have conversation and it's it happens here that people that kids that want to go out that kids that want to just you know have fun and all of that because they've groomed them over time they'll fall into that trap yeah. the cyber bullying yeah. that's another uh, um, um, danger the cyber bullying where people get to bully you online say things that they're not meant to say mm. Because we feel that we can hide behind the computer and nobody sees our face. So we utter things that we're not meant to say. Mm. And it hurts people. Mm. You stalk people. You know, keep on keeping tab on them online. and We shame people online. Mm. Online shaming. So you have probably you've taken somebody's video offline. Mm. Maybe raped the person. Then you put it up online. That's crazy. And you have, it's something that we're familiar with here in Nigeria that, you know, when people still for especially for the female when they still they strip them naked start putting Don't iron rod into yeah, their yeah, private parts yeah. and all of that and you put it online it's yeah. not fair wow we have a lot to talk about it's quite yeah it's all. quite it's, it's, it's <laughs> so quite. um so let's quickly wrap up what are the advantages of e-parenting i know the advantages mm -hmm. is obvious yeah <laughs> it's obvious but i just need to use so yeah so it keeps you in the loop of what what is happening okay. in your child's life online because if you're not asking they're mm. not telling yeah that's true so you have to be able to ask mm. and know mm. before they can tell and if if they're not asking if you're not telling you you could actually snoop around there's nothing wrong about snooping around because it's your safety yeah. it's not about so now because if anything goes wrong it still comes back to you because you're yeah. going to be the one to find a solution to that problem yeah. so snooping around is not a bad idea for me it's just you knowing keeping tab on your child so mm. it's it, it, it saves you the headache mm. of thinking about what is happening to my child online mm. is she safe 
is anybody saying she with, who is she chatting with, who is, is what are they saying is she sending or is he sending the nude picture to somebody what's happening yeah. what's happening personally because i remember what really inspired me was when i read about a story of a girl who was bullied online and she killed herself afterwards a 13 year old girl and it was one of the things after reading about cyber bully cases and all of that and i'm like i went to train some kids on on digital safety and i was like what are the rules about internet do you have and they said mommy said we should not finish it finish what data that's the only rule you people have and he said yes and you have a tab he said yes i felt that there was more to be done mm. then there's more on sensitization that we need to let these kids know that the fact that you have you have access to, to the internet. internet doesn't mean that you should not be careful. Parents should be able to know what is going on in their lives because they, they spend most of their days there. Mm. So nine's one. Nine's one. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming on the show. I'm actually feeling very emotional right now about this. I hope you've learned a lot on e parenting. E parenting is um is key is the key right now to your child's safety on the internet it's not just about buying data and probably buying them a tablet it's not it's not just about taking them to computer schools to go learn how to use the internet or probably learn some stuff on computer you also need to be that nigerian mom that nigerian dad on the internet so lara thank you so much for coming yeah, on the show yeah. don't go anywhere tech innovate we'll be right back but let's quickly go take a look at our diy video Imagine a smart government agency enabled by smart people, smart processes, smart technologies, and committed to building smart public agencies across the nation. Welcome to Galaxy Backbone, one government, one network.